when we look at sad or tragic people's lives, the first type of lives that we think about are the people that had everything and lost everything at the same time almost. And a particular person I'm going to point at right now that is really a true biography of what I just said is Mark Antony. Mark Antony was the most royalist of all of Julius Caesar's soldiers and generals that worked below him. He was essentially Julius Caesar's right-hand man. And when the time came, Julius Caesar had made it look like to Mark Antony that Mark Antony would be heir to his throne when Julius Caesar would succumb. Now, this actually never happened because of the fact that Julius Caesar actually rendered Octavian to be his adopted son in his will after his death. So therefore, Octavian, or now named Augustus, as Julius Caesar wanted him to be named once he became his adoptive son, would actually become the dictator of Rome. So all of that hard work that Mark Antony had put in and eventually would think to himself that he would become the emperor of Rome did not matter. Despite Mark Antony, of course, being mad about this, like how everybody should be, he was really just going to stick with it as there is nothing he can do. As once you're heir to Julius Caesar's throne, you are essentially the most powerful being in existence at this point. And so Mark Antony just went along with it and became a second in command, again, to a much, much, much younger person than him, but he stood to it. And for many years, Julius Caesar's most royal general ruled alongside Octavian, or for Octavian, and many native parts of the world. But eventually, he would find himself in the intermingle with Cleopatra, who is by many people's accounts too, and not just, who is by many people's knowledge, who by many people's knowledge, who is Julius Caesar's, who is one of Julius Caesar's, Cleopatra was, of course, Julius Caesar's ex, 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 ex wife, assuming that he had 600. And so this was kind of weird, but it was not weird to the point where it was like, eh, you know, whatever. I mean, everybody was doing it back then. Let's be honest, the majority of people were fucking hating Cleopatra back then. Let's, let's be completely honest. And so Mark Antony would fall into an intermingle, like I just said, with Cleopatra. But Cleopatra had pretty big disagreements with Rome. And Therefore, Octavian was not having any of that shit. He was like, bitch, if you don't agree or list off to anything I'm saying, I will fucking slay the Egyptians with my pinky. And that's exactly what he did. Obviously, that was a very, very, very long war. And surprisingly, Mark Antony, despite being a particular person that worked within the groups of Octavian and would have had a chance to survive if he decided to leave Cleopatra and become his own man once again, declined that notion and rather joined Cleopatra in her ultimate doom. Now, of course, this isn't actually the end of Mark Antony, as he would actually end up fighting many battles and which would become a long-term war against Octavian. But eventually, somebody would confess to Mark Antony that Mark Antony's wife, Cleopatra, had been killed. And so, therefore, he could not live with himself. So he then kills himself. So yes, Mark Antony's life is essentially dumbed down to an assassination of himself. Wow. Isn't that crazy? You guys want to know what else is crazier? Cleopatra was not even dead. Cleopatra was very much alive. By the time Mark Antony had tried committing suicide and had actually succeeded, Cleopatra was in a beautiful monocliff sort and essentially had had it guarded up completely and utterly. And whilst Mark Antony was essentially bleeding out like he had been suckled by a vampire bat, somebody had came up to him and said, uh, you know what, she's not actually dead, I can take you to her right now, she wants to see you. Mark Antony's fucking face must have been like, what? 